not actually FOC. Where is the feedback? Post it. Anyway guys, that was an FOC control, but the encoder got burned. Remember? So I could only use it in open loop circuit. And now I have a new PCB. And this time, as you can see, I've made it with two sensors, one that is expensive and a cheap one. And surprise, surprise, the cheap one is actually better than the expensive one. I mean, it's not better, but I got better results with it. So guys, this is my journey of creating one of those hub motors that the Boston Dynamics robot have. So for that, you need torque, speed, but also precision. On one hand, the brushless motor has the torque and the speed. And on the other hand, the stepper motors have the precision with the step controlling and all that. But what if I told you that you can control the brushless motor with a lot of torque, but also a lot of precision. And we do that using FOC. So if you also want to make your own robot dog, you need to see this and learn about FOC. So let me show you everything about this project, the circuit of the PCB, the sensors and the components that I'm using, how to implement the code, what is actually FOC and how to do that with the feedback and everything about this project. But this time with a closed loop system. That being said, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. This new project is awesome. Now the PCB kind of looks the same as the previous one, but it has some changes. I've ordered it purple from PCBWay. And this time it has two sensors and I've made it so you could just snap the sensor PCB with your hand without having to cut it. So if you want to try this awesome project, get my Gerber files from below and then go to PCBWay.com. And here is very easy to order just for $5. Click the code now button and on the next page add the size of the PCB, the amount and also select a color. This time I've selected the purple one. Add it to the cart and on the next page upload the Gerber files and place the order. That's how easy it is to use the services of PCBWay for PCB prototyping. And as always I received the PCBs in just a few days and they look awesome. I think that for this project I like better the purple color than the red one from the previous version. So now we have the PCBs. To get the sensor smaller PCB just snap them with your hand like this. So now we have 3 PCBs at the same price of just one. I could order them separately but like this we save some even more money. The small PCBs are for the encoder sensor. One is for the AS5600 sensor which only costs like $2. And the other one is for the AS5048 sensor which costs around $14. On the main PCB as you can see we have a place for the smaller PCB with the pins for PWM and also I2C. And that's because these sensors could output both PWM and also I2C values for the angle. These ICs are working with radial magnets meaning that the south and the north are radial positioned and we use this to know the exact angle of the motor shaft. On the main PCB we have the Atmega 328 chip for the main microcontroller and the L6234PD for the motor driver. And the PCB has some extra stuff such as the buzzer for sound notifications, a MOSFET and a fan output to cool down the components and two inputs for a potentiometer and an I2C control. The PCB also has some screw holes to go exactly on top of these motors. And these are brushless triple phase motors and we need them to have as many stator coils as possible. You see, this motor from a drone has few stator coils, so it could spin very fast but the position control at low speeds would be awful. So for slower and smooth movement in FOC, we need more stator coils, so the sign signal could pass smoothly. That's why for example the hoverboard motor from a previous video has so many stator coils and the motor spins very smoothly. Slow but smoothly. By the way, usually brushless motors are labeled something like this, let's say 12N and 14P, meaning 12 stator electromagnets and 14 permanent magnets, just so you know. Actually on a brushless motor you could have something like this, 22-12Q for the diameter and the height, let's say 850 kV for the revolution per volt and 12N14P for the magnet configuration. 
the more you know, huh? Anyway, the motor I'm using has 22 magnets, and that's important for later in the code. On the shaft we have to glue one of those radial magnets. So you can see how the magnet is now rotating at the same time with the motor. Then the PCB gets on top of it with the sensor, and that's how we can know the position at any moment. Look for example, here we have the PWM output from the sensor, while rotating the shaft. As you can see, it gets bigger or smaller, according to the angle of rotation, and we can easily read this PWM signal in the Arduino code. That being said, let's assemble the PCB. I take the main microcontroller out of an Arduino Nano clone, in order to be sure that it has a bootloader. Because you see, I've also bought some Atmega 328 chips like this. But these are blank chips, without a bootloader. I could burn the bootloader, but we need access to the ISP pins, which this PCB doesn't have. And I place the ISP pads on pretty much all my PCBs. As you can see on these boards, we have the MOSI and the MISO pins. But now when I need them most, I forget to add the pins. I'm such a genius. Anyway, the first thing that I've soldered was the Atmega chip, the resonator, the reset pull-up and the DTR capacitor. And the values are on the schematic. Then I test it using one of those FTDI programmers. Upload any code to it and if it works, then the chip part is good to go. But you see, the nano clone that I took the chip out was using a 16.8 microcontroller instead of the 32.8p microcontroller and I haven't seen that. They are basically the same, but the 61 has less memory. And the code that I've prepared for it won't fit. So I had to take the chip out once again and solder another one. Again, I'm such a genius. Now that the chip works, I solder the rest. Starting with the driver chip. And this could handle up to 4 amps and it will get quite hot, trust me. That's why the PCB also has some pads for a cooling fan, but we won't need it for the tests. Solder the small resistors and capacitors, also some diodes, the LED and that's it. Then on the small PCB I desolder the magnetic encoder from a module and then I solder it to my PCB. Then I add the encoder PCB on top of the main PCB. The motor gets soldered to these three pads for the phase A, B and C. And the board will get on the back of the motor using screws, face to face with the magnet that we have glued before to the shaft using some super glue. Now the setup is ready for the code. The PCB has UART pads for the FTDI programmer, so connect it and then we add the USB cable and let's start with some tests. I have two boards one with the AS5600 sensor and the other one with the AS5048. Now even if the AS5048 is a lot more expensive, for some reason I was only able to make it work with PWM mode, and PWM mode is not as precise as I2C. That's why I've decided to continue with the 5600. So for the first test I download the AMS5600 library and I run the read angle code. Upload the code and open the monitor. As you can see, I can now see the angle when rotating the motor, so the sensor is working. For the next part we have to remember the open loop control first. And if you remember this was the code, and I was using SPWM signals using this lookup table. I was using the same approach as for my sinusoidal inverter project using SPWM. Now this is how you can get these values. I had two options. I could calculate them in the Arduino code or using a lookup table. So I've decided to calculate the values directly in the code. But if you want to use a lookup table, here's how you can get the values. Let's say that you want 128 points for the lookup table. So in Excel, I make 180 degrees from 0 to 180 like this. In the next column, I calculate the signed value. Use radians function because Excel is working in radians and not in degrees. Then I multiply the result by the maximum value of the Arduino PWM signals of 8 bits, which is 255. And that's how I get my values, 0, 6, 13, 19 and so on till 255 and then decreasing down to 0. 
and this represents a sine loop of 180 degrees. The other side is the same but applied to the other phase of the motor. But in the new code I calculate the SPWM signals for each phase with 120 degrees phase difference and then I constrain the values to range of 0 to 260 degrees. To get the PWM values I was using the sine function and then apply the PWM signals to the driver with a fixed torque value. But uploading this code would only rotate the motor without a feedback, as we have seen in the previous tutorial. I can change the angle with the potentiometer, but if I move it with my hand, it won't go back to the original position because this is not a closed loop. But now we have the sensor, so now let's check the closed loop code with the PID control that I've made. First we read the potentiometer for the set point. Then we get the real angle from the magnetic sensor. Then we divide the angle for the electrical angle, because you see it's important to know the amount of pole pairs that our motor has. As I've told you my motor has 22 magnets, so it has a total of 11 pole pairs. So in order to make a full real rotation, we are making 11 electrical rotation inside of the coils. That's why here in the code we map the real shaft position according to the electrical rotations. Then we calculate the PID error. Depending on this error, we first decide if we will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. Then we make the PID code, which is actually PD code, I haven't used the I variable. The P value is proportional, so just the error multiplied by the P constant. The D value needs the elapsed time and the error difference and finally, we sum up the PID output as the PID torque variable. I've placed the PWM signals in a separate function and here, depending on the position, we calculate the SPWM signals using again the sine function. Then apply the values to the output pins and that's it. I upload this code and let's check it out. Look, I can change the angle with the potentiometer. But now, if I rotate it with my hand, it will get back to the same position. Now that's real FOC control with a good feedback. And since we have the PID code, the movement is quite responsive. You can change the P and the D constants in the code if you want and try different values for more speed or precision. It has quite some torque and I'm only running it at 7 volts because at more power the driver will get quite hot. You could even rotate this a lot and it will still get back to the original position. That's quite awesome to see. By the way, this is also compatible with the simple FOC library, so you could download that from GitHub and test it out it has some nice features. For example, my motor could only go from 0 to 360 degrees, because for now the code is not made to make more than one rotation. When I get to 0 or 360, the motor starts spinning as you can see here, because the error is always greater or smaller than 0. I will improve my code for future updates. So now you could use my setup for your own FOC project for making a robot, a balance or any other PID control system using brushless motors. You've also learned how the poles of the motor affect the code and how the feedback is implemented with the magnetic sensor. You have all my files below, the code, the schematic, the PCB files and everything that you need on electronics.com, so just download them and create your own project. I am quite satisfied with the results. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, so that was another project and I hope that you like it. As you all know, to buy all these modules, a huge help from you is from Patreon. So if you want to support me, you can support me there, but also just commenting below, giving me a like or sharing this video, it will also support my channel. So thank you very much to all my patrons and to you guys.